Hello! Welcome to the Voyage of the Monk podcast, the podcast where an Irish folklorist talks to an American about the voyage of St. Brendan, the navigator. <laughs> an American. That's, that's my identifier. Yes. The American. Yeah, that, that's what we're going with. That's what the format is now. That's how I'm describing it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hello, I am Fawn. I'm Alice. And uh, we're going to talk about the voyage of St. Brendan the Navigator, in case that wasn't already made clear. Oh, it, it has occurred to me, it has occurred to me that this is episode three of the podcast, and we have yet to share any of our socials or anything like that. Because we're very good at this. So, so good. We're so good at this. So, if you want to follow me, um, look for Hog and Dice, and anything that comes up from that is me. That's how that works. Um, if you want to look for me, uh, my art handle is Firestarter, F-1-R-E-S-T-A-R-T-3-R-R, which is, it looks a lot cooler than it sounds when I spell it out, <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, that's that's my art. I have a website, which is firestarter.com, where you can find ev- everything that you would need to talk to me. And if if you just want to support the show, you can, you can rate it, review it. <laughs> or, or there's a Patreon for Hug and Dice, I suppose. Anyway, anyway, let's get down to business. To talk about St. Brendan. <laughs> so after their encounter with Jason, the giant fish, Brendan and his monks sail westward for three days until they land on an island filled with lovely plants and trees. But apparently it doesn't smell right because nobody thinks it's paradise. So, does paradise have a smell? Well, we talked about that in the first episode. I have ADHD. What do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, they um, they they all knew that these monks had been to paradise because of the smell of their clothes. I'm still caught up on that. Like, how do they know what paradise? Smells? I don't know. I don't know. We haven't gotten any satisfactory answers in the comments. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but a, a quote, a quote from the actual um, the actual text. And when they had gone long in this, they found a full fair well, and thereby stood a fair tree, full of boughs, and on every bough sat a fair bird, and they sat so thick on the tree, that uneth, which means hardly, any leaf of the tree might be seen. The number of them was so great, and they sang so merrily, that it was a heavenly noise to hear. And the bird on the bough, and the bough on the tree, and the tree by the well, and the well in the garden, and the garden on the island, and the island in the sea, and the sea in the bog, and the bog down in the valley. You're a nerd. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, basically, they they go onto the island. Uh, They find a well, eventually. Uh And the well doesn't really come up that much. What's more important than the well is the tree. Uh Uh-huh, with the bird. what's more... Yeah, and what's more important than the tree is all the birds. Because the tree is so covered in birds that you could barely tell there's a tree. Were they, like, fat birds? Were they borbs? It's just, it doesn't say. There's just an awful lot of them. You know, this book is lacking in a lot of details. <laughs> Zero out of ten. I need to know if they were borbs. Well, borbs, borbs happen because when birds are cold... They will fluff up their feathers to catch air underneath so that the air warms up and stays warm. So there, this is like a tropical island, so probably not. I don't need to know the science. The science of Borb. I just need Borb. <laughs> anyway, Brendan is so happy to see this tree full of birds that he falls to his knee as knees and cries. Honestly, fucking same. <laughs> This keeps happening. Uh, You see, I don't really understand why he's so happy that he has to cry. Because the very next thing he does is pray to God to give him the understanding of what the birds actually mean. Why do they have to mean anything? They are birds! But like, 
If you if you have no idea what the significance of these birds are, why are you crying? What's going on? Why do they have to have significance? Like birds birds don't have religion. They're just out here vibing. They're living their lives. They don't need a higher meaning. Uh, uh, but it turns out the birds do have religion. The birds have religion. One of the birds flies down and lands in front of Brendan and I quote and he, with the flickering of his wings, made a full merry noise like a fiddle. So the bird's wings sound like a violin. Okay. But the text says fiddle, which means the bird's wings sound like a violin played by someone who's working class. Okay. So what tune do you think the wings are playing? Come out, you black and hands. <laughs> I think it's Devil Went Down to Georgia. <laughs> Shit, you're right. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you have an opinion on what tune the bird's wings are playing, then please leave it in the comments or in your review. Um, or tweet us. Um, the bird's wings outfiddled the devil. <laughs> Not even the bird. The bird's wings. And then the bird gets a golden fiddle. <laughs> and then the bird's like, what the fuck do I do with this? Oh, wait. Brendan commands the bird to tell him what the fuck is going How on. How do you command a bird? And the bird says... Fuck you. Sometime we were angels in heaven. But when our master Lucifer fell down into hell for his high pride, we fell with him for our own offences. Some hither and some lower, after the quality of their trespass. And because our trespass is but little, therefore our Lord hath set us here, out of all pain, in full grace, joy, and mirth, after his pleasing, here to serve him on this tree, in the best manner that we can. So they're not actually birds. Yeah, yeah they're they're angels they're angels they're, they're they're fallen angels so they're not birds with religion they're angels who have been turned into birds it's different they're not actual birds so, so rather than being birds with religion they are in fact religion birds yeah it's different <laughs> actual birds don't care about religion these aren't actual birds they're just fucking posers <laughs> okay so this does actually touch on two interesting things uh, first is the idea that the fairies in Irish mythology and the Tua de Danon, and it gets complicated, but there's this idea that they were actually semi-fallen angels that weren't sent to hell. They were sent to live on earth and live in the elements and live in the natural world. So we see that's basically what's happened with these birds. That's basically what the birds said. Christianity has to take claim over everything. Um, they're like oh no those things that you think are your religion they're actually our religion fuck off <laughs> but the other thing is there's um this very frequent motif in irish folklore that birds are messengers between our world and the other world and they carry messages for the fairies they carry messages between the two worlds they can cross between the two worlds so the birds are angels and they're also fairies and they're actually a little bit like the eagles in Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings. So there's a lot of things going on there. Pick a fucking struggle. <laughs> in fairness, this was written long before Lord no, of the like, Rings. No, like, pick a struggle. <laughs> anyway. The bird tells Brendan that a year has passed since he started his voyage. And that it will take another 12 years to complete. Oh my god, what if somebody did have a cat though? <laughs> well, it was only like there was a lot more monks at the monastery. There was way more than just 12. Okay, so there would be people to take care of the cats? Yeah, there's, yeah, some... there's someone still there to take care of the Thank cats. god. The Pangerbon is not going to start. Thank god. I, wish, I should read you the Pangerbon poem at some point. You'd, like, you'd really like Probably, if it's about a cat. <laughs> it's about a monk and a cat I only care about the cat <laughs> Well it's it's partly about how much the monk loves his cat Acceptable <laughs> Okay so yeah It's going to take another 12 years to complete the voyage According to this bird But every year Brendan and his monks Are going to return to this island To spend Easter there you know, honestly, I'm starting to think that your man just got real fucking lost and could not admit it. 
<laughs> this is this is one of the things that makes me very skeptical about the idea that they sailed to America because they keep coming back to this island. I I on I think he just got really really lost and kept getting really lost and like he couldn't admit it so he made up this story about how he like found God or something. But also the bird tells them that today is Easter. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so then the bird goes back to the tree and all of the birds start singing the hymns of an Easter mass. Like all of them at the same time? Yeah, they're 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 a choir. So there's like one bird singing one No not like oh. all of the hymns at the same <laughs> Listen <laughs> <laughs> Like in succession <laughs> <laughs> like I did ask if they were singing them at the same time and you I said yes you were all the birds singing at the same time because that makes way more sense <laughs> I'm just saying I asked and you said yes <laughs> what do you want from me <laughs> more clarity in your quest I'm doing my best <laughs> anyway Oh, it doesn't say if the birds flapped their wings for musical accompaniment, but I like to think they did. Just just flapping their wings to play the fiddle. Yeah, you know, as you do. <laughs> as one does. <laughs> anyway, so Brendan and his monks, they, they have Easter on the island and then decide to spend another eight weeks on the island because, you know, they figure, like, we're going to be at this for 12 years. So <laughs> Yeah, sure, why not? We can do what we like. I'm not staying on the boat for that entire fucking time. I think that they said the birds were flapping their wings to play the fiddle because when you play the fiddle, your elbows are out. Well, no, it's it, what it said was that it was like it was the sound of their wings sounded like the playing of a fiddle. Yeah, but I'm just like, I'm just thinking like when you're playing a fiddle, your elbows are kind of out. So maybe it's kind of like a bird's wing. I don't know. That's just a connection I made. <laughs> it's fine. Don't laugh at me. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing in appreciation. <laughs> I find you endearing, and thus I laugh. That is what I do. You know this. <laughs> anyway, so they stay there for eight weeks until Trinity Sunday, which is a holiday for celebrating the Trinity, which, like, I kind of feel like all of them are for celebrating the trinity seen as the trinity is like the central thing of christianity but this is for specifically the trinity what fucking trinity um i thought there was just like the the big man and then jc no, the, little the, jeezy <laughs> <laughs> um god jesus the holy spirit oh the father the son and the holy spirit i yeah. i get it yeah 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 uh, um they are the trinity it's it's a, it's a triplicated god. It's a it's a triplicated. Don't mind me. I'm a godless heathen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> okay, so on Trinity Sunday, they decide to set set off again. So they return to the island of sheep. Remember the island full of the gigantic fluffy white sheep. I do. I do. Uh, and they go there for a meal. It just says they have some food. I assume. They're eating sheep. That's horrible! We eat no, animals. I don't mean it in like, uh, oh, I can't believe they're eating animals, like, militant vegan way. I just meant like, I don't know, like, it just feels weird to do it with a giant animal, like, because, no, because, like, when you think about it, it would be that much harder to kill that animal, so there would have had to be, like, a big fight. I don't, I don't think they're giant giant. I don't think they're like bigger than humans or anything like that. I think they're just unusually large. Okay, because like when you said big sheep, I was thinking they were like the size of like Appa from Avatar. From Avatar? Whoa, that would be extremely big sheep. I think they're more like cow size. Okay, because like... Is, which like, is still pretty big for yeah, sheep. Yeah, it's pretty big for sheep. It's just like that would have been like a fight like there would have been like throwing hands and it would have been very violent to like take down a sheep that size and like why would you do that with a sheep <laughs> listen, listen. 
Okay, so since you since you had to mention Appa, um, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of now imagining Brendan and his monks as the like. E- and listen, I know the influence is distinctly different. I know the influence in Avatar is Buddhist monks, but I'm still picturing them now as Airbenders. Um, <laughs> Brendan and his monks are Airbenders. I think Airbenders are like far more practical than Brendan and his monks <laughs> could ever hope to be. Brendan could never. <laughs> no, what kind? What kind of? What kind of um? What? What element do you think Brendan would bend? I don't think he'd be a bender. Really? You think he'd be more like Sokka? I still feel like that's giving him a lot of credit. (laughs) Mind you, I'm still operating under the theory that this man just got fucking lost for 12 years and could not admit it. (laughs) Well, the influence this is drawing on is that at some point on their voyage, they actually crossed over from our world into the other world. Uh-huh. So they're in magic seas now that are just confusing and stuff is moving all over the place. And also there's elements of destiny uh-huh. involved warping their journey. Right. So like, that's that's just, it doesn't matter how good a navigator you are, how good a sailor you are. This is going to take 12 years. That's the only way to do it. No, fair enough. If he did actually cross over into wherever they are. <laughs> like if we're but if we're like looking at this from like a very like non-believer perspective, which I admittedly somewhat have as a godless he <laughs> Um, I still think your man maybe just got lost. (laughs) Okay, okay, but if we're looking at it from a godless heathen perspective, in fairness, we've still got talking violin birds and a fish that can be mistaken for an island. He was very high when he got lost. (laughs) (laughs) Um... But yeah, it's 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 drawing on on much older kind of mythology and and older kinds of concepts and understandings of the other world and metaphysical ideas and all this other kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, it, it it makes sense that you could get yeah no absolutely and, and be be trapped and also again the level of destiny. It's like you have to be on this journey for twelve years before you would be able to find this place. You literally won't be able to see it until you've been on the journey for 12 years kind of thing. You know, you say the word trapped and it does kind of add another perspective to it. Uh, I don't think he signed up for a 12-year journey. (laughs) And it's a good thing that he's so rapturous anytime he sees a fucking bird in a tree. (laughs) Or Or a dog or literally anything. Because otherwise your man would be hella depressed. I would. I didn't sign up for a 12-year journey. I got on a boat expecting it to be a couple months. What about all his crew members? Did they sign up for a 12-year journey? They signed up to do as they were told. Yikes. (laughs) I'm just saying, like, God, JC, or whatever, could you maybe, like, lay out an itinerary if you have something planned? Okay, actually, actually... Actually, let, 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 let me get to the next... The, let me finish up here. Because um, that, that actually feeds into what, to the end of this. So yeah, they return to the island of sheep. They have a meal. And after eating, they go back out to sea. And the bird flies over to them again. Goes up, like flies up, lands on the mast. Uh-huh. And says they will soon fi- find an island with 24 monks living there. And that Brendan and his crew will spend every Christmas on that island for the next 12 years. And then the bird fucks off. Okay. <laughs> so, like, the birds who work for God are kind of giving them a bit of an itinerary. They are saying, listen, this is where you spend Easter. This is where you spend Christmas. We don't mind what you do with the rest of your time. At the end of the 12 years, you get to paradise. That's how this is going to happen. <gasps> You make an itinerary before you leave. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Like, 
<laughs> G-O-double-D, come on! Well, listen, listen, in fairness, Brendan didn't even know there was a fucking bird travel agent until he reached that island. I... Mm, <laughs> I'm just saying, if I was going on a mission to find whatever it was he was looking for the the, the, the island of the paradise. island of paradise and then somebody told me actually you got to stick around in the area for 12 years i i take some issue with that i'd be like uh yeah but would you be going on a holiday or would you be going on like a holy quest to like humble yourself before god and show your piety Y no no yeah see if you were doing if you were doing the second one you'd be like oh 12 years fucking great the longer the better <laughs> i i guess <laughs> <laughs> but like if you were going off on like a holiday or if if you were just exploring you'd be like nah this is fucking bullshit i hate this but like no nah, this is a quest for god 12 years is great <laughs> i do you have anything longer? <laughs> Just such an unhinged idea for me. Like, I don't think they were expecting it to take this long. You know what I mean? And then to find out, like, oh, 12 years. Bro? Uh, is that negotiable? I don't want to be on a boat for 12 years. <laughs> It just, it's like when you're at work and your boss is like, oh, go fold this entirely wrecked section of the store and make sure everything is folded. But really, you were supposed to be doing something else that was nowhere near as taxing, but you got to do it. You're just like, okay, boss. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it is a perspective thing. Because like... I, I, I actually I, I have good a good way of looking at it I think is uh, Sisyphus. Uh, you you know Sisyphus, don't you? I am familiar with the name. What was? Uh, uh character from Greek mythology, uh -huh. pissed off the gods. Yeah. The point is his punishment. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He had to push a boulder up a mountain. And then every single day it would roll back down and he'd have to do it right, again. Right, right, yeah. And had to do yeah. that for fucking ever. What did he do that pissed off the gods? I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> Someone mention it in the comments or tweet us. That, that, that'd be great. Engagement. <laughs> but gods are assholes. They that's, are. That's my take. Like, oh, go on a journey for 12 years. Push this boulder up a hill. Get your liver eaten by a bird. What is your problem? <laughs> Why are you beefing with literally everybody? Okay, you we've got it downstairs. You need to read The Last Hero by Terry Pratchett. Uh yeah, let me just put that on my to be red pile. <laughs> it's 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 actually quite short. It's it's mostly illustration, but um it's about the last hero. His name is Cohen the Barbarian, and he's in his 80s. But not like Aragorn is in his 80s, like a normal person is in like their 80s. Like an actual old man. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um and he, he's decided, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck this. I dedicated my life to story. I dedicated my life to fulfilling this heroic ideal. And now I've got back problems. I got false teeth. I fucking hate this. I blame the gods. And he and his friends, they decide that the last hero needs to return what the first hero stole. And in, in Discworld, the first hero stole fire from the gods. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So their plan... <laughs> They've got a barrel full of essentially nitroglycerin. Okay. And they are going to climb up the gigantic mountain at the center of the Discworld, where the gods live, uh -huh. and blow up the gods. Great, I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's their plan. Go off. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think you'd really enjoy that. Go off, please. <laughs> <laughs> but again, with with monks, with with the priests, it's a scatticism. 
it, the suffering is the point. The, the difficulty is the point. It is what makes them holy. It is, it is the point of the journey. They, they signed up for a difficult, painful, awful journey that would test them and prove their, their piety and their humility before God. I mm, <laughs> again, I'm trying really, really hard to be respectful, but oof, why would your God want you to suffer? <laughs> well, from an ascetic, like again, there are different forms of asceticism in different religions. A lot of the time, it isn't that the God wants you to suffer. Uh, sometimes it's so you can understand the suffering of others. Sometimes it's so you can... It's often so that you kind of like... Understand your place in the world. Understand that you are not like hyper significant over other people. That you're not more important than other people. That you can be um, brought down and 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 forced into horrible circumstances just like anyone else can. Um, but again, the problem is that that sometimes becomes competitive and becomes like a whole, I have suffered more than you, therefore I am better than you and completely defeating the purpose. <laughs> yeah, them. exactly. And like, that's where I take issue. Like, yeah, like it, it, it depends on the approach and it depends. It, it's, it's a highly, in my opinion, individual thing. It depends on how each individual who is involved in it um, deals with it and thinks about it and approaches it. Uh, I don't. I don't think there's there's any kind of like blanket assumption that can be made. Yeah. No. Absolutely. But like with w with relation to Saint Brendan, he's not doing it to bring you know himself empathy. He's doing it because he wants to be closer to God. Yeah, there's there's very little mention of anything Brendan does to like help. Exactly. People. That's um, that's and that's what I mean. Like it feels like a very egotistical thing. He's doing it because he wants to be closer to God. There's there's a couple of um there's a couple of moments that we'll get to later where he where he does help people, but how much that counts you you'll understand when we get to it when we get to those people and we we get to the context around us that i feel like it it still feels like more self aggrandizement mm -hmm. cuz i i do agree that brendan saint brendan does feel very self aggrandizing and uh you know again i don't want to make any generalized statements but i do think that's like a big issue with like christianity and catholicism yeah, no, yeah, it, it absolutely can be, like, um... It, it stops being about, like, the betterment of yourself. It's it's more about, like, oh, look how close to God I am. Look what yeah. a good life I'm living. When when people argue that, like, no, you, you can't have your religion determine all the laws of the country. You can't use your religion as a justification to oppress other people. And they go, this is discrimination against Christians. This is anti-Christian. There is a war on Christianity as a result. That's the kind of thing you're talking yeah. about. That's yeah. that's using the aesthetic of asceticism and like manipulating it and weaponizing it. Exactly, yeah. um, and that that is a problem. Um, and I do feel like there's a bit of that with St. Brendan. There's a lot of that with St. Um, Brendan. But he doesn't do it like... He, 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 it's not like a victimization of Christianity on the whole thing that he does. It's more like, look how great I am that I'm doing all yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, it doesn't feel like he's actually doing this for, like, any sort of righteous reason. It's just because he wants yeah, because... to be perceived as more holy. Yeah, because there's there's not really anything in this that can benefit the world at large mm -hmm. that that can benefit people who are suffering or 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 hurt or or anything like that it's just like this is just brownie exactly. point and like also the stuff he's going through like most people aren't going to experience like 
Actually, no, because he didn't even have a bad experience with Jason. He was just being a dick, laughing at his friends. (laughs) Mostly he's had a great time. (laughs) Anyway, anyway, so we're going to finish on a quote. And then St. Brendan and his fellows sailed forth in the ocean. This was after the bird fucked off. And soon after fell a great tempest on them in which they were greatly long time. Oh, sorry. I'll start that again. And then St. Brendan and his fellows sailed forth in the ocean after the bird fucked off. And soon after fell a great tempest on them in which they were greatly troubled long time and for laboured. Ending on a cliffhanger. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> All right, yeah, so that's that's our episode for, for this month. <laughs> I was worried it was going to run under. I think we're actually a bit longer than we usually are. <laughs> because I, I regularly get angry when I think about asceticism. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I try really hard not to sound like a dick when I talk about it and make generalized statements, but Brendan, cop the fuck on. <laughs> I'm, I, I beg, please, sir. <laughs> But yes, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. We'll be back next month with the next entry. Same monk time, same monk channel. Goodbye. (laughs)